So the other day I was listening to an interview that Carolyn Meese gave and um, the interviewer, the host was Alan Steinfeld and Alan actually referred to a third person who wasn't there, a gentleman by the name of Marshall Rosenberg and um, Alan quoted him as saying that each of us has a need to contribute to the well-being of another. And Carolyn agreed and said it this way, we ha that we have a need to be good and we have a need to use our, our life force for life for our own life and for the life of others to be supporting that grand principle in the universe. And so I've been thinking about that. And, you know, just like we have to eat, just like we have to breathe, we do have to love. We have to love and be loved. And it is just as much an energetic need. And if you do not know how to help someone out, if you do not know how to be kind, if you do not know how to love, then you're sick. There's a sickness just like you would get um, if you didn't eat food or health, if you didn't eat healthy food. You, your whole being changes if, uh, if you eat only junk food. Your whole being changes. Your whole thinking and feeling processes changes with junk food than if you were to eat healthy foods, you would have different thoughts and feelings and behavior. And the same thing with uh, choosing to be loving and helpful and good gives you different thoughts and feelings and behavior than if you didn't. It's, it's a need. It's like something that has to take place in our energetic body, in our lives. And to be good is maybe a little hard to define. I mean, we all know what it looks like when we actually see it but maybe to talk about it but to me being good involves having integrity it involves being harmless not harming others and not allowing others to harm you and not harming yourself but to be kind and in this case um, Marshall Rosenberg talks about contributing so helping someone out and um, it's really hard to make that leap. Like if you're not used to helping someone out, it's really scary to do it the first couple of times because you have the social anxiety stuff. I do anyway. Um, but if you don't exactly like your life, if you do a f something to get out of your, out of yourself and help someone else out to contribute your life force to someone else, um, after a while it gets addicting. It's so fun to be good and to be loving and to be helpful. And I'm not saying I'm great at it, but I just know how I feel when I do it. And you can always start small. You don't even have to start with people. You can be kind to animals and they don't judge, you know? They don't just pet an animal instead of passing one by. Or just smile instead of lowering your head, which is actually, that's actually a very courageous thing to do, to lift your head up for a smile. But being good is, and being loving and contributing your life force to life is also very practical. Because if we do not do that, let's see, the consequences, we cannot live in trust. We cannot trust one another. If we cannot be good, we cannot trust, be trustworthy. Because we don't know who's going to harm us. And other people don't know if we are going to harm them. We're a world of people who are under threat, real and imaginary. We don't, we don't know if we're going to be under threat. And then there's times when we have lots of experiences where we know we are under threat. And we cannot trust. And a, a being that is living in distrust of, your, of yourself and of other people is a very unhealed being. The only way to be healed is to move into a condition of trust. And that has to take place if we are uh, good and if we're serving each other. It's unnecessary. Because otherwise we're just traumatized. We're living in a traumatized world. But if we just help out a little, and I'm, I'm not saying it's like easy as all that, and yet at the same time, it's not as complicated or difficult as we make it to be either. It just is like, what is one thing I can do today for someone else? 
And that's a reminder for myself too. So think about that because peace in the world and peace, inner peace require trust. We must have trust. Peace and inner peace requires trust. It requires safety and for trust and safety to thrive, we must have uh, goodness. We must be good. And so yeah, think about that and uh, we'll see you next time.